Today it's all about children, protecting them from abuse, ensuring their voices are heard, and parenting them responsibly. Hi there, I'm Theodore Henry. Welcome to Jamaica Magazine. Get settled. All the information we're sharing today you don't want to miss, so please stick around. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Tuesday, November 22, 2022. The Ministry of Finance and the Public Service has reached an agreement with 14 union bodies to facilitate government's restructuring of the public sector compensation system. The 14 groups, which comprise most of the Jamaica Confederation of Trade Unions, represent approximately 60,000 of the roughly 110,000 workforce. Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark says the development is significant given the four years of work that has gone into designing the new compensation system and the extensive period of consultation with unions. He commends the unions for the level of commitment demonstrated throughout the process and encourages other unions still reviewing the government's proposal to complete that in short order as time is of the essence. Minister Clark says the government is committed to implementing a public sector compensation that is fair, transparent and sustainable. The new compensation system will be implemented over three years, starting April 1, 2023, and will cost approximately $120 billion over the period. The Income Tax Amendment Act 2022, which sets out to ensure conformity with international obligations, was approved at the last sitting of the Senate. Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith, who piloted the bill, says it is a companion to the recently passed Special Economic Zone Amendment Act. Both pieces of legislation work together to ensure conformity, conformity with uh, international standards of tax transparency, as well as improving efficiency in administration of the regime. According to Senator Johnson-Smith, with the drive to increase economic production, incentives provided within the special economic zones are designed to facilitate their contribution to nation building. One of the primary incentives provided for in the Income Tax Act is the Employment Tax Credit, which provides business owners the ability to claim credit against income tax payable for their contributions to their employees' statutory deductions. But the SESA legislation had provisions which prohibited entities in economic zones from claiming the benefit. That was addressed and now the amendment to the Income Tax Act will provide further clarity by widening the scope of the ETC to include businesses under the CESA. So they work in a, in a cycle ensuring that they support each other. Members of the public and special interest groups are being encouraged to send in their written submissions on the Bail Act by November 30. The bill is now before a joint select committee of both Houses of Parliament for review. The process will provide the opportunity for committee members to probe the bill deeply, ask questions and make suggestions for improvements. Minister of Legal and Constitutional Affairs Marlene Malahu Fort says submissions can be addressed to the Clark to the Houses, Gordon House, 81 Duke Street, Kingston, or emailed to clark at japarliament.gov.jm. She was speaking at a recent JIS think tank and explained that rewriting the Bail Act had resulted in the preservation of the established common law rules as well as some modifications. Even where we have preserved existing provisions, it's going to be very important that you read fully and carefully the new law. Fully and carefully. Why do I say that? Because when you come to interpreting the law or you go before the court asking the court to interpret the law, the court will look at what is written. And believe me, a single word can make a difference. The Legal Affairs Minister insists that persons should not take for granted that they are familiar with the provisions of bail at common law or the Jamaican jurisdiction. To review the bill, interested persons can visit japarliament.gov.jm and search under the publications heading. The call for a national consensus on the protection of the environment has been sounded. It comes from Minister with Responsibility for Information, Robert Morgan. He was delivering the keynote address at the Kingston Harbor Ecosystem Adaptation Measures Keem Conference on Friday. What it means is that you need a wide cross-section of allies in the environmental fight. You need people in civil society, 
you need students, you need members of the opposition, you need members of the government. Minister Morgan lauded the Keem project, which is building the resilience of low-lying areas in the city of Kingston against climate risks through mangrove restoration and conservation. The overseas-funded project is being executed by Mona Geoinformatics Limited in partnership with the Center for Marine Sciences, the Grace Kennedy Foundation, and Newer Worlds Limited. Among the measures highlighted by Minister Morgan that the government has done to protect the environment are the Port Royal Street Coastal Revetment Project, the National Tree Planting Initiative, and the declaration of over 78,000 hectares of the cockpit country as protected area. And finally, three outstanding public sector workers have been chosen Civil Servants of the Year for 2022-2023. Simone Turton's award for the technical support category was received on her behalf. She works at the University Hospital of the West Indies. The middle management category was won by Oliver Morris of the Administrator General's Department. Lennox Wallace of the Ministry of Health and Wellness walked away with prizes for the management category. The winner of the inaugural People's Choice Award is Sophia Moulton, Director of Ceremonial Operations and Staff Administration in the Office of the Prime Minister. The award ceremony was held at the Terra Nova Hotel in Kingston on Friday. Each awardee received $150,000 for a joint community project from First Heritage Cooperative Credit Union Limited. State Minister in the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service, Marcia Smith, commended them for their exemplary service to the public sector. From the managerial to the technical level, you are the wheel that keeps the daily operations of this country turning. And for that, Jamaica owes you a great debt. Because it is the public service that has weathered the country through various social and economic storms. In his response, Mr. Wallace gave a commitment on behalf of the recipients to continue giving sterling service to the sector. We serve as a testimony to those who are coming behind us. We have paved the way somewhat, and we ask our colleagues in the different agencies and the different ministries. Just like I always say, management and work is like a relay. When you get the button, you got to run as fast and as hard to complete the task. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. Every Jamaican has the right to know what is happening in Parliament, to know when new laws are being passed, and to give their opinions on legislation before either House. Every Jamaican has the right to see their representatives in action, making laws, holding the executive to account, representing the people, working for the benefit of all Jamaicans. It is your right to observe first-hand meetings of the Senate, meetings of the House of Representatives, and the meetings of parliamentary committees. You may also take a tour of your parliament. To find out more about the Houses of Parliament, please call 876-922-0200, follow us on Instagram and Facebook, or visit our website at www.japarliament.gov.jm. On Friday, scores of students participated in the Stop the Silence, End the Violence Islandwide Remembrance Rally and Children's March. They marched from St. William Grant Park to the Secret Gardens Monument in downtown Kingston. It was among activities organized by the Child Protection and Family Services Agency, CPFSA, to focus national attention on the issue of child abuse. Then on Saturday, the CPFSA, the Ministry of Education and youth and other stakeholders organized a national church service to mark World Day for the Prevention of Child Abuse. Here's just a bit of the very important message shared by the minister charged with the care of Jamaica's children. There's an epidemic of child abuse in Jamaica. I don't know of any other way to say that. 12,000 children. And the cases, when you, when you look at the statistics in terms of the number of cases, because one child may be involved more than once. Multiply that 12,000 by three, right, Ms. Gage Gay, or even more, and you will see the magnitude of what it is we're dealing with in Jamaica. 
And then we wonder why we see violence erupting in our schools. We wonder why we see all this indiscipline on our roads and in different parts of the country. It's the way in which we as adults interact with and treat our children and the way in which our children absorb the cruelty. And so when they go to school, at the slightest hint, somebody says something, another child says something that they don't like, they erupt in violence. It's because they don't know how to deal with what's being visited on them by the adults they believe should be loving them, protecting them, and taking care of them. There's a clear need for a whole of Jamaica approach to caring for our children. We need everyone to be looking out for our children. We're keeping the focus on children. Several months ago in May, I had the pleasure of speaking with a lovely youngster, one of Jamaica's children, who's giving me hope for the future of this country. Her name is Jamie Lee Satchel, and we met to discuss issues affecting children as the country was celebrating Child Month. The months since then have not diluted her message, and as it was then, I think now is a good time to hear the voice of a child as we contemplate how to care for and protect them all. Jamie, it's a pleasure having you. Thank you. All right, so let's talk a little bit. Now, before we do anything else on the program, I'd like you to share with our viewers a little bit about yourself. Uh, they know your name, Jamie Lee Satchel, but tell us some more about you. So my name is Jamie Lee Satchel. Mm -hmm. I'm nine years of age. Mm -hmm. I attend the St. Richard's Primary School. I'm in the fourth grade. Right. I enjoy singing and drawing, mm -hmm. and my favorite subjects are language arts and math. Language arts and math? Yeah. All right, that's, that's, that's nice. Anything else you want to include? Mm, that's it. Really. All right, we're going to talk about some, some more of this. Now, May is Child's Month, Jamie. You knew that, May being Children's Month, yes. And one of the focuses of Child's Month this year is encouraging positive behavior towards children. Is that something you think is needed? I think it's a brilliant idea because children need to feel more love, right. can feel more love, can feel more respected, feel more appreciated, and this will help them to think positively about themselves. Right, right. Have you seen and experienced children who don't feel very loved or appreciated? Not really. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. And with this focus on listening to children's voices and, as you're saying, loving them more, appreciating them more, how are some of the ways that grown-ups can do this from your perspective? So I think that we should have professionals coming to the school and telling us how to manage ourselves Right. And you should have motivational speakers yeah. who come and tell you how to motivate yourself and others. And others. You mentioned professional people. What do you want to become when you grow up? I want to be a pediatrician. A pediatrician? All right. That's, that's a lot of school you have left to do. But well, you're up to it, right? Yeah. And why do you want to be a pediatrician? Because I really love children. They're really funny and nice. Mm. Okay. <laughs> you love children. All right. So when it comes to children, Jamie, a lot of people treat children as if they don't have problems or, you know, you're small. You're just nine years old. What, what kind of problems could you possibly have? Do children have problems? Yes, they do. Because children have problems with bullying, peer pressure, schoolwork, and focusing on their work, 
Some of them are time wasters. Right. They don't know how to finish the work on time. Mm -hmm. All right. How do you think people can go about helping out with some of these issues you mentioned? Well, I'll pick out two. You mentioned bullying and you mentioned time wasting. How, how do you think people can help with that? Well, bullying, children can speak up to adults that they can trust and the adults can probably help them to like uh, motivate themselves right. so that they can stand up for themselves. And time wasting, I think that, they sh that the adults should just tell the children how to focus on their work more often. Okay. And when Miss give you work, do it right away. Ah, that's, that's a good strategy. But it, from what you're saying to me, Jamie, it sounds as if people have to spend time listening to what the child says. Yes, that's right? true. Right, so, you know, I've heard stories of children saying, hey, I'm being bullied, and people sort of brush it off. But that's not really a right response, is it? Well, when people are saying they're being bullied, you're supposed to say, all right, so this is what you have to do to stop them from bullying you, stop for yourself. And if they're bullying you too much, speak up to the principal or whoever is with you who you can trust. Right, 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 right. You know, Jamie, it's, I, I've really enjoyed this conversation with you and I'm sure our viewers also. But we have parents watching, we have children watching, and I'd like you to take a moment and just speak to them encourage them this is your moment to say something to them that really matters all right so just just look right right at them and give us your final word so what i'm saying is that uh, you should take care of your children you should love them respect them and just try to be a good parent mm. and i i want i'm sorry that was your final word but i want to ask you as well and what should children do well, children should just know how to stand up for themselves and how to stand up for others. Mm -hmm. So in case of a situation, like somebody's getting bullied, they can step in and help that person. Parenting needs to be strengthened. Parenting. Parents must take charge. We cannot have people becoming parents and you are weak. You cannot allow a gang leader to take your child. I only have these children when they come to me, when the parents send them to me. So, these are your children. How dare you give them over to gang members? You must, and the whole family, must be in charge of the children. Children are children, and they need to be nurtured. We must take control until we hand over to them. That is what needs to be done. Before the break, you heard young Jamie Lee's message to parents all those months ago. Take care of our children, love them, respect them, and try to be a good parent. We know this is easier said than done, but it's certainly worth the effort. So up next, parents, we have some tips on how to effectively parent your children. can be very frustrating and a lot of times people don't feel like they really have an answer to everything and the truth is that that is the reality. But there are different things that people can try 
Um, we're not saying that any one thing works for everybody or that you even get the outcome that you want immediately. Especially when you're dealing with young children, you might have to try something several times before you see a particular result. So for example, if it is that you want a child to learn the difference between right, right and wrong, a lot of times in the past we use pain to teach that this is wrong, right? Um, but we find that ultimately when you hit a child, what you're teaching them to do is when I don't like something I should hit and I should lash out. What you want to try in a situation like that, you can try removing privileges. If there are things that the child might love to do or even the age-old timeout, um, you know, where you say, listen, for this period, you have to sit by yourself, there's no communication, there's no talking, sit down and be still. Sometimes you have to physically just hold your child and help them to breathe through it because you have some children where they have so much emotion and so much anger and they want to get it out that it's really difficult for them to regulate it at such a young age. And so you have to physically hold them, put your hand on them, help them to breathe through it until they're calm. And with children, even if they don't understand necessarily um, the big concepts of right and wrong, they can sometimes understand tone, right? And tone is not the same thing as lashing out and using um, certain words and calling them different names. Tone is being firm and saying, I do not want you on this. So for example, if a child keeps going off on something, you might have to take them off it 10 times, right? And continue to reinforce with the same tone and consistency that you do not want them on this. And also for younger children, sometimes you have to be the one to remove whatever it is that you don't want them to interact with from the environment, right? Because they're so young and so impulsive, you can't necessarily leave it to them to understand I shouldn't touch this thing. Right, so that's how we deal with the younger children. For teenagers, it's a little harder in some ways and in other ways it's a little easier because they do understand the difference between right and wrong. It's clearer what are some of the things that they love and you can remove those things. But one of the things that's really important with teenagers is really to take the time to make sure that they understand that their feelings and their opinions are valued. So in the moment, yes, I'm removing these things, but I'm also having a conversation with you about why you won't have access to these things for a particular period, right? We're explaining why this thing might be dangerous to you, whether or not you agree with it. I am the parent, right? This is where I am coming from. It really requires a conversation because ultimately what you want to teach them to do you know, is to reason and to think right you don't want to just be disciplining and you're not helping them to think through it and to use proper judgment and reasoning skills and so those are some of the things that you can try if the child becomes stubborn the child is more obstinate and the child has a fixed mindset if you will that this is what he or she is going to continue to do then you might need professional help you might need to call the commission or you might need to call a social worker or a guidance counselor to help for you because sometimes parents don't have the language either to even explain why this behavior is wrong and that causes friction once the friction starts then we recommend that you get a third party involved because it could become worse So far, today's entire show has been a call to action, encouraging you and us to do all we can to care for and protect our children. Abuse is not the only danger they face. Safe passage to and from school is another concern. The good news, there's a program on the way trying to make sure this happens. Take a look. project is an intervention to support the safe commute of children to and from school using specific roadways and thoroughfares. Road safety is a national cause for concern as hundreds of Jamaicans including children have lost their lives annually due to road accidents. The police and citizens do welcome the Safe Passage project. This project is not only beneficial to our youngsters, but by extension, the community. 
The project has already been implemented in eight schools across Jamaica under the first phase of the Integrated Community Development Project, the ICDP, which was funded by the World Bank. And building on the success of phase one, the Safe Passages Project is now being implemented under the Government of Jamaica's ICDP2 project in five communities, Salt Spring and Anchovy in St. James, Tread Light in Clarendon, Greenwich Town in Kingston, and August Town in St. Andrew. Three of these safe passages, including within Salt Spring, are Government of Jamaica targets under the EU's Citizen Security Program for financial year 2021-22. We are here in this ceremony to hand over a safe passage. And let me tell you that indeed when we help the government to implement the citizen security plan to make sure that children can go from the two places in their life which should be, you know, where they should be safest, between home and school, one cannot say that that is not contributing to citizen security and to their well-being. So I'm extremely happy to see that we have included interventions like this in our support. It is not just a road safety project, it's a community project where everyone gets involved. The project does not stop with the infrastructure, it also includes a comprehensive public education and road safety program targeting staff and students, residents, transport providers and other road users by educating them on proper road usage. It is my hope that this Safe Passage project will attract other stakeholders to build on this foundation. We know how pretty sidewalks and guardrails, no care can bounce with them, cause we know in of them way. And we see a passage, we get we see a passage. This Safe Passage in Salt Spring boasts all the features which have become synonymous with the project. At a cost of $14 million, 400 meters of sidewalk was constructed with safety guardrails. School traffic signs were installed already and the pedestrian crossing was put in place. Additionally, two bus sheds were constructed. The school fencing was rehabilitated and replaced with a block wall structure decorated with murals depicting messages on road safety. It is my hope that this Safe Passage program will have the outcome of providing safe commute for students, staff and other pedestrians in partnership with the wider community and other stakeholders. This is where Jamaica Magazine ends today. Another Jamaica Magazine launches tomorrow. View it here or on JIS's website. We share so much more there, so take note of the link on screen and visit the site that's updating you daily on issues of national importance. I'm Theodore Henry. On behalf of the entire production crew, thanks for tuning in and see you next time. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.